Aviation has always been about defying limits, but hypersonic flight is taking this to a whole new level. This new hypersonic jet by the United States could make the world feel smaller than ever by allowing travel at speeds far faster than what we have today. What technological innovations support these endeavors? And who is involved in this audacious mission? Join us as we look into the U.S. force testing the most dangerous hypersonic jet ever, and it's ready to fly. Traveling in the world today is fast, but there is a way to make it even faster that only a fraction of the time currently required will be used, and all is becoming a realistic possibility with hypersonic flight, which aims to achieve speeds greater than Mach 5. However, the realization of this technology involves overcoming significant challenges in both physics and engineering. First, hypersonic speeds cause huge heat. It is known that whenever an airplane flies at the speed of Mach 5, then the air molecules tend to rub against each other and create heat above 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit, and this heat is enough to melt ordinary materials. This has caused engineers to come up with materials that have high heat resistance and special cooling mechanisms. Hypersonic aircraft also have to face a problem such as drag, which escalates sharply with speed and calls for a higher energy propulsion system than the regular jet engines. To complicate design matters even more, one must differentiate between hypersonic and supersonic propulsion. Supersonic aircraft such as Concorde use turbojet engines. However, such engines are not as effective as hypersonic speeds. Hypersonic aircraft can be equipped with one or more types of propulsion with turbojets acceptable for low-speed flight, while ramjets or scramjets for high-speed flight conditions. However, each of these systems has its issues. For instance, ramjets and scramjets, these types of aircraft engines can only be ignited at supersonic speed. Thus, takeoff and landing processes are complex engineering challenges. In addition to propulsion, sustaining hypersonic stability and control in the atmosphere is a major engineering challenge. At such speeds, the airflow becomes irregular and has to be modeled and predicted through analysis using computational fluid dynamics. CFD, when designing or by having an advanced flight control system to reshape the airflow immediately. Nevertheless, hypersonic capability research remains relevant due to transformative possibilities. But what technologies make such a transition from ideas to implementation possible? Several innovations are already in works and are paving the way to hypersonic flight. And one of them is the creation of hybrid engines, which include the Chimera engine by Hermos. This is a turbine-based combined cycle, TBCC engine that merges features from turbojets, ramjets, and scramjets, making it highly efficient. TBCC engines are innovative as they combine the benefits of each propulsion system with the least of their drawbacks. For instance, turbojet can provide far more efficient and a low-speed range together with takeoff while ramjet and scramjet take over for hypersonic speed range. Thanks to the Chimera engine, this transition was performed successfully which can be considered one of the significant achievements in the field of hypersonic technology. Another important addition is material science. Building hypersonic aircraft requires the use of new advanced materials, which include alloys, ceramics, and composites that can contain thermal and mechanical stress. Certain implementations use coolants, whereby the heat is carried and dissipated through channels within the design structure to avoid structural collapse. Navigation and control systems also become an equally significant factor in the whole process of reducing oil consumption. The speeds in hypersonic flight are unprecedented, and any small iota of inaccuracy or delay in data processing becomes catastrophic. Sophisticated sensors, artificial intelligent flight control systems, and machine learning help instant decision-making based on variations in the environment. To further improve results, some corporations are going for low-cost approaches to product development, including using readily available parts in creating the testing environment. For example, Hermos used the Chimera engine with the help of real-world turbine engines, including the General Electric 85. This approach was time and cost-effective as compared to the traditional practices which effectively helped to fast-track the project. That is impressive, yet how are some of these innovations being incorporated into the newest hypersonic designs? Focusing on its quarter horse program, Hermus presents the development of hypersonic technologies. This program is designed to test and refine hypersonic flight capabilities through a series of progressively advanced prototypes, MKO, MK1, MK2, and MK3. 
The MKO, the first one, was used to test most of the common equipment and functionalities, the most important of which were including the remote command and ground control. While it took only six months to construct the MKO, the rocket met performance standards that included state monitoring and lost link testing during an assessment at the Air Force's Arnold Engineering Development Complex. Expanding upon this output, Hermus has since presented the MK-1 as a remotely piloted vehicle with a test flight planned for before the end of 2024. This version will come up with the high-speed takeoff and landing of the planes, which is an essential factor in the future of hypersonic travel. The MK-2, accordingly, will come equipped with the improved Chimera 2 engine, which, with the help of incorporating more potent components for the given model, is capable of reaching a speed of up to Mach 2.5. The most challenging goal is associated with the MK3, which is designed to surpass the current maximum airspeed record holder, the SR-71 Blackbird. The MK3 is designed to perform flight transitions between turbojet and ramjet, and is set to achieve Mach 4. These iterations not only demonstrate how quickly hypersonic platforms can be developed, but also how quickly projects should scale. With each version, Hermus is gradually inching toward the achievement of ordered hypersonic flight. So what does the future have in store for such applications of these technologies in commercial practitioners? Despite the fact hypersonic technology has been applied mainly in the defense and research field, now there are companies such as Hermus looking for possible ways of hypersonic technology's application in the field of commercial aviation. Potential projects in the small economy model, such as the passenger aircraft known as the Halcyon, demonstrate the possibility of this future. Potential application of hypersonic aircraft includes long-distance air transport, drastically reducing the New York to London time to three-quarters of an hour or 90 minutes, if you will. This speed is realized at operational altitudes ranging from 100,000 feet and above where there is less air resistance and drag hence less fuel consumption. However, several challenges are still indispensable before this vision can become a reality. One major obstacle is noise. Sonic booms are produced by hypersonic aircraft, and they can cause disturbance in populated regions. To tackle this, experts are working on designing aircraft that produce less noise and identifying flight routes that pass over sea and areas with few people. Some of the challenges include environmental impacts because hypersonic engines have higher emission rates per distance covered. However, current research on the development of sustainable fuels and advanced engine technologies could offset such an effect. However, the steepest challenge remains the expense incurred in the creation and maintenance of hypersonic airliners. These aircraft use advanced materials and technology, and this makes their prices high, hence may not be easily acquired. However, lessons learned from early prototypes such as quarter horse could help minimize the cost of production over time. Last but not least, in order to enable hypersonic flight vehicles, regulatory frameworks need to be developed. Additional considerations such as treaties governing the use of international airspace, safety requirements, and noise ordinances will have to be adapted to accommodate routine use of them for commercial purposes. However, major funding and cooperation from institutions such as NASA, along with the U.S. Air Force, are a testimony to the idea of hypersonic travel. Is it possible for the Halcyon to be the Concorde of the future, or is there a new entrant on the horizon to threaten Hermes's supremacy? Hypersonic flight is the dream of tomorrow's planes fully realized and implemented at a science fiction rate. Whether it will change aviation in the way it is planned will depend on the above mentioned issues concerning technicalities of the machinery, the improvement of the prototypes like the quarter horse, and societal issues. While all this is impressive and unique to be able to travel at a faster speed than before, what exactly led to this? And where is the root of all this plan based on? The application of hypersonic flight means, which is determined by the velocities above Mach 5, has origins in the never-ending desire for higher velocity and the constant evolution of aviation technologies. Well before the current advances, the process started with military goals and testbed airplanes designed to explore the boundaries of flight in the Earth's atmosphere. During the middle part of the 20th century, the global superpower rivalry of the Cold War drove the pace of aerospace innovation. Military superpowers pumped their money into high-speed reconnaissance and defense systems, which saw technological advances that included the SR-71 Blackbird. Built for the Air Force by Lockheed Skunk Works, the SR-71 could go Mach 3.3 and over 85,000 feet. 
This remarkable aircraft often used the Pratt and Whitney J-58 engines, which were a hybrid of turbojet and ramjet technologies. The Blackbird, although not definitively a hypersonic aircraft, provided valuable experience by executing the problems of heat control and power at high velocities. At the same time, both NASA and military research facilities started to use rocket-powered plane for studying the possibilities of hypersonic flight. NASA's X-15 program, with the support of the U.S. Air Force, reached a bypass speed of Mach 6.7 in the early 1960s. With the ability to reach a top speed of over Mach 6, the X-15 with liquid-fueled rocket engines was an incredible success in furthering the study of hypersonic flight. However, its radical dependence on rocket propulsion was a drawback that did not permit consistent wandering in the atmosphere. The search for sustained hypersonic flight changed in the 1980s with the National Aerospace Plane NASP, or X-30 program. Initially proposed as a single stage to orbit vehicle, the NASP envisioned using advanced propulsion hardware and composite materials to achieve hypersonic velocity. Though the program was stopped on its track by insurmountable technical and budgetary problems, it contributed so much to the scientific advancements in material science, computational modeling, and propulsion systems. Towards the end of the 1990s and into the early 2000s, exciting new aircraft such as the Boeing X-43 and X-51 proved that the scramjet or supersonic combustion ramjet was a real possibility. These vehicles, capable of reaching more than Mach 7, demonstrated the possibility of using scramjets in hypersonic technologies. It also pointed out some serious drawbacks, like the problem of sustaining the combustion at high velocities or the need for extra power sources to help the craft during the takeoff phase. These preliminary works formed the basis for contemporary hypersonic advances, as well as the first steps towards creative perspectives in propulsion apparatuses and superior models. But what particular advancements in the engine design have made the progression to hypersonic flight? Propulsion technology is at the core of hypersonic flight, and learning the evolution path from primitive rocket engines to contemporary hybrid systems took decades. Previous means of propulsion, like the turbojets and rockets, were found to be inefficient for sustaining hypersonic motion and needed innovative designs that could efficiently operate through hypersonic flight. The first tries toward the achievement of hypersonic speed employed rocket power. Forces like the Reaction Motors XLLR-99 that powered M2 in the X-15 supplied the vector thrust delivering raw power for velocities greater than hypersonic. These engines used liquid oxygen and anhydrous ammonia and produce lots of thrusts. However, their use of oxidizers on board and high fuel utilization rate made them unsuitable for application in the atmosphere. Rocket motors provided initial insight into the hypersonic environment, but they were not well suited for longer duration missions, long on-station times, or efficient use of fuel. This limitation led to the creation of air-breathing propulsion systems for needed thrust. Turbojets became a special innovation in aviation power plants, which used the oxygen in the atmosphere for burning. These engines, which first compress the air coming from the air intakes before mixing it with fuel, make good subsonic and supersonic planes. However, due to high drag and thermally induced stresses, their performance degrades above Mach 3. The engines that were installed in the SR-71 Blackbird models were Pratt and Whitney J-58, and they introduced some elements of ramjet at high speeds. These engines could convert to turbojet and ramjet, where ramjet capability made it possible for the SR-71 to maintain a speed of up to Mach 3.3. However, the use of these capabilities could not be considered a suitable strategy for hypersonic travel. After the development of jet engines, ramjets, which do not use any form of rotating compressor but instead rely on the forward motion of the aircraft, became the subsequent advancement in propulsion devices. Turbojets are less complicated and lighter than these engines, and therefore suitable for supersonic flight. But the performance is at its best up to Mach 3 because the air entering the combustion chamber becomes very hot and cannot be combusted effectively. This problem is eliminated in scramjets, a variation of ramjets that maintains supersonic airflow throughout the engine. These engines allow for steady burning at velocities of more than Mach 5, and are a foundational aspect of current hypersonic design. Some examples of scramjet propulsion at speeds of Mach 7 and above include NASA's X-43 and Boeing's X-51. Nonetheless, scramjets are not effective at low velocities 
and need an additional power source for the vehicle to reach the speed where a scramjet can be used. The TBCC engines brought a revolution in the hypersonic propulsion system as it spearheaded a new phase altogether. As an amalgamation of turbojet, ramjet, as well as scramjet systems applied in one unification, TBCC engines meet the drawbacks of singular solutions. Turbojets deliver thrust at low speeds, ramjets are meant for supersonic speeds, and scramjets are meant for hypersonic speed. Hermus's Chimera engine is a good example of the TBCC system as it combines the ready-made turbine technology with the design to order ramjet as well as scramjet parts. This design makes it possible to switch between the different modes of propulsion and thereby allow for optimal power at a variety of speeds. The technical accomplishment of the Chimera engine to switch from turbojet to ramjet mode is a great hypersonic achievement, paving the way to more complex systems such as the Chimera 2. These propulsion systems have taken decades to evolve from ideas and experiments to create shining examples of developing rocket engines. Core samples are essential to hypersonic development since they act as testing grounds for propulsion, materials, and stability lines. Today's prototypes have expanded from the experimental aircraft learning from prior designs and implementing features not available in prior hypersonic aircraft to reduce the challenges experienced in the sustenance of hypersonic flight. The X-43 and X-51 projects were crucial since they pioneered scramjet propulsion among scramjet developmental high-speed projects. The X-43 itself moved up to a speed of Mach 9.6 in 2004 and thus became the fastest air-breathing vehicle in the world. Similarly, the X-51 successfully tested scramjet at Mach 5.1 in 2010 for a four-minute flight fostering more advancement of scramjet for hypersonic usage. However, these programs also expose some inherent deficiencies of the scramjet, such as the requirement for an additional rocket propulsion system and combustion instability at very high speeds. The high-speed glide was tested by the DARPA Falcon Hypersonic Technology Vehicle 2, HTV-2, for hypersonic glide. The HTV-2 was initially released through a rocket and reached Mach 20 before it started gliding toward its intended destination from space. Though the program experienced issues such as thermal protection and aerodynamic stability of the vehicle, the program provided useful data for the design of true hypersonic vehicles that are to remain airborne for significant periods. Private companies are moving to the forefront of hypersonic technology development, as shown in recent years. Some of the companies that participate in this industry include Hermus, which has transitioned to a more refined system of creating its prototypes through the Quarter Horse program. As opposed to previous attempts that still depended on government support, Hermus highlights the necessity to work fast, in cycles, and within tight budgets. The Quarter Horse program has four models, MK0, MK1, MK2, and MK3, which are all prototypes for hypersonic flight testing. The MK0 has been used as a ground-based testing model for main structures and key systems. The MK1, which is due to start test flights at the end of 2024, will be used to test high-speed vertical takeoff and landing capabilities. The MK2 model is a new level with the Chimera 2 engine, with the possibility of reaching a top speed of Mach 2.5, this version will try switching between turbojet and ramjet modes as a foundation for the development of MK3, which is being designed to set a record for the speed in the air, currently held by the SR-71 Blackbird. The fact that the quarter horse program is divided into modular phases and the time to create this product has been significantly reduced proves that the private sector can contribute to the development of hypersonic technology. And with it, with every single prototype, the dream of hypersonic flight and the ability to achieve it becomes less a dream and more possible. In this process, they are continuing to deliver new dimensions for aviation that can create new opportunities, not only for the military, but also for commercial ones. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Click the link below to see more videos like this. See you soon, bye.